Professor Wargley's here. We just fixed up the database. We created a users table. We then altered the table to add more columns. We successfully connected to the database to log in. We've also successfully created the second form, which is a requirement on the final project to create a user. We've successfully inserted that user to the database and we're able to log in with that new user account. Today we'll be in the create user form. We're going to make it a little bit better experience. Okay, for one, I can go to the create user form. I cannot type in anything and click on submit. Okay, and I just created a new user account. Well, we don't want that to happen because now the user is null. Okay, it says duplicate key for username. So when well, we don't want that to happen, one way we can fix that is from the front end. On the front end, we put that each of these are a requirement. So I can say first name is required. Okay, and I can put this required keyword on all the elements. The last name is required. The username is required. The password is required. The confirmed password is required. Birth date is required. And email is required. Now I can check this in the back end which would be wise, but I can also do it in the front end. So if I update the code on the server, do a refresh, try to click on submit, you'll see this message now. It says, please fill out this field because it's required. So when I put required, this message will appear. Okay, if I do a refresh to get rid of that message, let's see, let's go back. Now click on submit. You'll see this message here. Please fill out this field because I put the required keyword. And also, if I do a refresh, you'll see nothing selected. I have to go here and select this first element. I can do something called autofocus. So if I put autofocus here, it's going to put the cursor in the first name field for me when the page first loads. Let's see, let me update the code, then refresh the page. See, now you'll see it selects first name for me. The user doesn't have to go and select it manually. It's automatically selected. Okay, that's one thing to fix it up. The other thing is, let's say the passwords don't match. I go and enter all this data. Okay, I enter all this data. It's all required now, so I'm entering this data in. I click on submit. It lets me submit the form. It says passwords do not match. And now I have to go and type all the data in again. Okay, what a bad user experience. If this happens two or three times to the user, they're going to give up. They're going to say, I don't even want to create an account. So I can handle this with JavaScript. In JavaScript, I can check as the user is typing. Okay, so I can use jQuery. jQuery is already imported. I can do something like this. I can say on the password ID, so on the password field, if they do a key up, this function will be called. Okay, this function will be called. What do we want to do? So when they do a key up, I want to grab the password field, okay, which is equal to the password ID's value. I also want to grab the confirm password. Okay, which is the same thing. I'm going to grab the ID confirm pass, which is down below, and I'm going to grab the value. After I have those, I could just check. I'm going to use JavaScript. I'm going to use their string comparison function, which is called local compare. Compare that with confirm password. If they're equal, it's going to return zero. Okay, so if they're not equal to zero, we have a problem. So if they're not equal to zero, what am I going to do? Now, if you scroll down a little bit, I have, I can create some output field. Okay, so let's say right after the form, I can do a BR, new line break. I can have a div here, let's say ID is equal to output div, and it's basically a blank div. So I can print some message. I can say in the 
ID output div, change the inner HTML, and say passwords don't match. Okay, passwords don't match. Otherwise, okay, we can do something like okay, doc or output div, uh, inner HTML, passwords match. Okay, this needs to be in strings. And then we close it here. So what's nice about this is, as I'm typing, it's going to be checking the passwords. So I do a refresh, come back here. Okay, so let's say first I type Nick, and now here I'm typing Nick. Passwords match, but the sign doesn't come up. Now if I change this, it comes up. So I need to do key up for both. I need to say key up on the password field and key up on the confirm password field. Okay, once I select both and add key ups for both of them, okay, we'll update the code on the server, refresh the page. Now if I type it here, N-I-C-K, N-I-C-K, you see passwords match, and I can click on submit. So you could warn them. But the bad thing is, I can still submit the form. Okay, even if the passwords don't match, I can submit the form. I just gave them an error message. Let's say they're not even looking at the error message. Passwords don't match. It still let me submit the form. Data is gone. So it would be nice if I can prevent the form from submitting. There's a key function I can use using HTML5. With HTML5, they have a function. So I can use JavaScript, document.getElementById. It's a JavaScript function. On the confirm pass, they have a function called set custom validity. Okay, I can say passwords don't match. Same message as before. And then here, if the passwords match, I'll copy this. and say passwords match. Okay, same message as before. Update the code on the server, refresh the page. Now here's what's nice about that, is when I type the passwords, let me go back one so I can get rid of that error message. Okay, refresh. Not sure what happened to the styling, but let's see, Nick, Nick. Okay. Let me do a hard reload. So if I do a command shift R, it's a hard reload. It's gonna empty the cache. Okay, so let's see. If I type in N-I-C-K, N-I-C-K, so let's just type N-I-C, hit submit. So let's fill all these out. What's nice about the set custom message is it's going to pop up just like the required field. There's a required field. If I put this in, here's my set custom message. So it's not going to tell you as you're typing, but it'll tell you when you submit the form. And what's nice is it won't let you submit the form until the passwords match. But let's say I make the passwords match. It says passwords match. Now I click on submit. It still doesn't let me submit. So I spent about, I don't know, a few hours trying to figure this out. Why is it not letting my form submit? The passwords match. Well, if I want the form to go through, I need to set the message to an empty string. If I set this here, it's going to prevent the form from submitting. And it will prevent the form from submitting until it's an empty string. So once I set it to an empty string, now it's going to let the form submit. So if I do a refresh here, type in some data, misspelled the password, 
click on submit. You'll see my custom message that we put in the code. Type the right password. It put the custom message to the empty string. Now let me submit the, the form. So I can prevent the form from submitting. That way the user doesn't have to keep typing in their information each time, okay, which would be a pain in the butt. So if I put an empty string, it's gonna let me submit the form and let me create the account. Now that I've already created an account with Nick, so that's why it's not letting me create the account. Let's see, I misspelled the password. I don't know if I did Nick3 already. Passwords don't match. Put Nick3 in the password, click on submit. Let's me create the user. Type in Nick3 as the password. Let's me log in. Okay, so that's working. But now, I don't have to keep typing in that info. It also helps me prevent from missing data. If the passwords are wrong, it doesn't let me submit the form. That way I don't have to type the form in each time. Uh, now there's a few things we can also fix up in the code, but after you create this and make it solid, then you have a pretty good application where they can log in using a database, but also create a new account if they're logging in for the first time. Okay, let me know if you have any questions in the chat or the email. We'll see you next time.